Amongst the Igbo, my people, proverbs are a very vital part of their everyday conversations. Proverbs are a very essential ingredient in the creative use of Igbo language. An Igbo person is viewed as an accomplished speaker if they can skillfully encapsulate proverbs into their speech. Africa has over one third of the world's languages, a very significant part of our planet's language diversity. But did you know that there's a rapid decline in many African languages today? Language decline happens when a dominant, politically stronger, and more economically viable language takes over, like English, Arabic, French. And even other African languages. Many African governments, some African governments, have made some traditional languages official, but they haven't always made provisions for training teachers or creating language materials. During my school days in Nigeria, children like me got punished for speaking their mother tongue in school. English language was the preferred language because of the colonial influence. In many schools across Africa today, children are still being punished for speaking their mother tongue. Some parents don't speak their mother tongue at home, either because they don't consider it important enough, are in an environment where the language is not being used, or are influenced in the language. Parents who want their children to learn the language find that there are limited learning materials. All these factors affect children's chances of learning their mother tongue, and as they grow up, it affects so many of them, affecting generations down the line. Because we live in a rapidly changing world. Our identity is increasingly becoming important. Languages matter. The growth of any language is measured by the number of new or young speakers, because the old speakers eventually die, and they take all the cultural knowledge and, lang and language with them. As the popular proverb goes, when an old person dies, a whole library burns down. Even as I speak, our elders are dying, and we are losing the treasure trove of important information they have. The scale of the devastation caused by language decline and culture loss is huge and spans many parts of our lives. From ignorance of unique solutions for solving local environmental problems to ignorance of medicinal plants and animals. Disregarding taboos and overlooking traditional methods of birth control. Oh, sorry. Even with something as basic as hair care, we've lost the knowledge of the traditional herbs and techniques that our ancestresses used to nurture their Afro hair. Somehow. We've been persuaded that our culture is primitive and barbaric. We are quickly losing the enriching cultural knowledge and specificities that make our communities unique. The language gap between the young and the old breaks an ancient but delicate chain of oral traditions. People lose their mother tongue. An entire community suffers. They don't just lose words; 
They lose the unique traditions, their way of life, their identity, all the knowledge that has served them for many generations. For instance, in Igbo land, kola nuts must be blessed, broken, and eaten before any activity or discussion can take place in Igbo land. Kola nuts must be blessed in Igbo language. We risk losing this core Igbo tradition because of the language decline. In many African cultures, names have meanings, and a child is named according to the circumstances or stories surrounding their birth. That is language and culture in action. Multilingualism isn't just a nice-to-have skill. Our mother tongues are tied to our indigenous cultural knowledge, and one cannot survive without the other. Our identity, which makes us unique and allows us to step out from the crowd, is in danger. So, if we don't preserve our traditional languages, our communities become a shell of its former self. My grandfather was a headmaster and a translator. He was a walking encyclopedia of my culture, and he taught me a lot. He laid the foundations for the work that I do now, and he inspired my passion for languages and culture. Last year, he passed away. I wish I could get some extra time with him, so that I can find out more about his early life and my culture. A lady called Enkikasi was the last recorded speaker of the Igbo language in Southern Africa. She died in 2013, making the Igbo language extinct. About 40 languages have become extinct. Have now become extinct in Africa, and 348 African languages are currently listed as endangered by UNESCO. If nothing is done, these languages will die. So, what can we do about this huge problem? When I was looking for interesting ways for my children to learn Igbo, my mother tongue, I discovered that stories offer endless opportunities for preserving African languages and culture. The good news is that technology brings new ways to capture all this priceless information and create stories in the form of movies, books, songs, computer games. Images, audio, and even clothing. Some examples of ways that we can find stories include proverbs, folk stories, and folk songs. Proverbs contain the wisdom of a people and are essentially complex stories and situations condensed in a few words. Which gives a world, an idea of the worldview of a people. As micro stories, proverbs are fantastic for teaching culture and language. For example, goats are important in Igbo land, and I used a proverb about a goat to create a mi micro le language lesson. Jiri ehi he choba. Ewoji. Even though this proverb can be translated to English, it still doesn't capture the wisdom or the sense, because things tend to get lost in translation. Because stories are flexible, I can either leave this lesson as it is, or I can create a longer story. About a goat that break dances, or I can decide to, to piece together a themed collection of Igbo 
Proverbs. Sometimes there are things I want to say, but I find that I can only express it best in my mother tongue. Today, we have access to so many different types of music, but we shouldn't forget our traditional folk songs, a unique art form that tells the stories of our ancestors. Folk, folk stories, sorry, folk, folk songs <laughs> give an idea of a people's history, our joys and our sorrows. Like this Igbo folk song that tells the story of a situation where bad things are now becoming normal. Mire zola sa cha pinha koro nubio Amu wa cha la cha mu cha kukondrio Mire na uwe uwe meko Obu yedika mire de tuka uwo Ala bwaru ihu Iyonjo obwa fwa obu rome na lao Umu wa jizi iyonjo eme ingala Obu zuni iyonjo aburu liyoma Every culture uses folk stories to convey historical, cultural, and moral values. You can either tap into your own traditional folk stories, or you can borrow folk tales from another culture, translate it, and make it yours. Alice can be called a maca, and the white rabbit can be a squirrel. I'll read you an excerpt of this modified folk tale. Amaka honro osa nefere yaka. Osa banyere ni moba. I created this Igbo dictionary for children to help my children learn Igbo words. For each word, I used a one-sentence story to make it more interesting and show practical usage. I also created a version for mobile devices and TV. If you are a parent, you can start teaching your child your language today by labeling things around the house and incorporating the words into normal conversation as often as possible. You can start with mixed language stories like this. Humor works as well, and you can create a very funny story about a crying orange who didn't want to be peeled. <laughs> Lately, some languages around the world, like the Oromo language, have been revived. Oromo people are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia, and Oromo language, or Oromia language, is spoken around the Horn of Africa. The use of Oromo language was banned for 50 years until 1991. Since then, Oromo people have revived their language by creating language learning schools and using their language in so many different formats. We have a lot of work to do. We can all start creating stories and gathering collections of language learning materials that grows yearly. Change will only happen when we come together to create language learning materials that we, that we, of, and cultures that we hold dear. This generation is losing out on our languages, culture, and stories. And we have all these stories inside us. Let's all, let us all start creating stories and language learning materials, and also the cultures that we hold dear, so that we can pass them on to, the, to future generations. Dalo, thank you.